Hey everybody, this is Cappy Smack coming to you from Vega Conflict. So I've been listening to some people rant about Vega Conflict recently, and uh, we're just going to sit here and look at my base while I uh, share some thoughts I've had about people who like to rant, and people who like to rant in general. I'm going to tell you, there's nothing perfect in life. You may have thought that you're entitled to perfection, in life, well, that's not that's not reality. Okay, there's nothing perfect. There's just a lot of imperfect. So rather than rant and cry and bitch and moan, which you're not going to hear me do here unless I'm making fun of other people who do that, because I realize there's nothing perfect in life. You're never going to get perfect. You're never going to see perfect. If you're looking for perfection, then, you know, you're crazy. That's the first sign of insanity, that you actually want things to be perfect, because they're not going to be. The closest you're going to come to actual perfection is a whole lot of stupid fucking shit. So get over it. So yeah, Vega Conflict requires people to pay money. Well, that is the whole idea behind Vega Conflict. That is the premise it was built upon. Now, you can fight that, and you can cry, and you can stammer, but the only thing you're doing is hurting yourself. If you don't like the game, then stop playing it. There are games that I have played that I thought I liked, and then after a while I got tired of them. So I stopped. I stopped until I got to the point where I might want to do it again. Because the sweet spot for me, and I'm all about sweet spot. You find the sweet spot, you hang out there, you do what you have to, and then you can move forward. So, look, my strategy in Vega Conflict is, number one, I'm not going to fight the fact that they want me to pay money. Because they do. And every game company wants that, to one degree or another. Now, you know, Kick's Eye is, you know, more of a whorish game in that regard, more of a whorish company in that regard. They're very blatant about it, but that's the premise. That's why this game exists. That's why they give you the ability to buy coins. So if you don't want to pay coins, don't pay coins, but don't cry about it. Because the people who do pay coins are always going to get farther ahead faster. And as a test... On that premise, I'm playing one account where I pay money, and I'm happy to do that, and another account where I don't pay any coins at all. Now, can I move forward in the account where I'm not paying coins? Absolutely. Am I going to get there as fast as when I did pay money? No. That's just life. You pay money, you get to enjoy having the money that you paid and it being used to move you forward. But you're going to see in the videos that I produce, there is a strategy that I use. And my strategy is to always find the sweet spot. So one sweet spot in Vega Conflict is you have to have a higher level fleet than the enemy you're trying to fight. That's just, that's just a fact. That's the way the game was designed. They, they do it that way because they want you to pay coins. So if you don't want to pay coins, then build your fleets up to be at least 10 levels above whatever you're trying to fight. Because the more levels you are above that enemy fleet, whatever the fleet is, the less damage you're going to take. And the more damage you're going to deal. Another sweet spot is you need to find enemies that you can fight repeatedly where you can balance the amount of damage with the reward. A lot of people don't do that. They'll go after the biggest, baddest thing in the game and then cry as to how fast their fleet got destroyed or, or cry about how much repair time there is. Yes, there's, there's a lot of repair time. And the higher the, the higher the quality of the ships, you know, take a look at Axis ships. There's more repair time than Xeno ships. Well, that's just life. But they are a higher quality ship. Are they two times higher quality ship? Well, you take a look at my level 75 fleet. Copy, sir. 
that's on par with a level 72 yes, fleet. Sir. And yeah, I have five ships in a level 72 fleet versus three ships in a level 75 Axis fleet. And they're on par. So, yes, Axis ships require more repair time. That's the risk. But the reward is you have a better fleet. Or just all around better. So I'm not crying about the repair time. If I screw up, or I get jumped, or I get jacked, in real life, if I were jacked, I'd be dead. Forget about the repair time. In the game, if I get jacked by a higher, higher level enemy, yeah, it's going to cost me some repair time. I can either bite the bullet and pay coins, or I can wait and do this you know, base relocation Profile. thing right there. I get jacked by someone. I know he's probably going to come back. He's just found out I'm weaker than he is. So relocate. You can do that for free once a week. That's why it's in the game. That has suppressed me being jacked. Go to a new sector. People don't know you. Blend in. Do your thing. Be courteous. You probably won't get jacked. You do get jacked. Every seven days you relocate. Your fleet gets blown up. You got the three day repair. Fight the bullet repair for three days. Walk away. Do something else. But if you got an Axis fleet, you're going to be doing more damage than people with a Xeno fleet. And a three ship Axis fleet is going to be on par with a five ship Xeno fleet. If you have a five ship Axis fleet, you're going to be on par with you know, you're gonna you're gonna rock and roll with people who have five ship, you know, same mark upgrade level Xeno fleets. That's just the way it is. Unless you get someone who really understands what they're doing. And they can probably beat your ass even with even with uh, a lower level fleet. That's just life. So, you know, you're not going to hear me rant. If you want to call what I just said a rant, that's the closest you're going to get to me ranting. I might rant about people who rant. I'm not going to rant about the game or the developers. The developers have a right to be paid for the work they've done. I'm a software developer. If I produce something and people like it, and I've been able to trick them into paying money, then I deserve to be paid for the work that I have done. Even if I'm able to get people to pay coins in a game, and it's addictive, and they keep doing it, then I deserve the right to be paid. So I'm not going to rant against Kixai. It is what it is. Deal with it. On the other side of the coin, I've been able to find my sweet spot in the game, and I've been able to get every single reward I have ever wanted unless I was totally confused about how to get that reward. And you've watched me do that time and time again. Yes, I may do the dull and boring thing of going after the lowest level enemies in the game, but that's my sweet spot. And that's where I need to be if I want to move forward. So hitting my sweet spot may appear that I'm doing dull and boring shit. That's possible. But the bigger picture is that dull and boring shit is what allows me to live. It's like in real life. I have to go to the store to buy food. That's a little dull and boring. I'd rather do other things. No, I could cry about it. I could, I could protest it. I could find other like-minded people and talk them into doing some really stupid shit. But that has nothing to do with what I have to do to live. You just do what you have to do. You do it enough, you do it successfully, you find a sweet spot, and then you are able to progress in the bigger picture. So, I find my sweet spot. I run on the little treadmill over and over. I happen to have time now because I haven't been working. 
I'll have a job coming up. I'm not going to cry about it. The job comes first. So you'll probably not see a lot of Vega Conflict videos. I may switch over to doing some other kinds of videos. Or there may be some dry spills when I'm not doing too many videos at all. Because I'm earning a living. And that comes first. And what I do in Vega Conflict will probably be just, you know, regular mundane shit that I would have to do to maintain things and to move things up in the background. Max out my modules, refit my modules, build, you know, Axis ships because they take a god awful long time. I've got a 12 day upgrade coming up in my fleet bay where the perfect time to do that is when I'm busy working because it'll just tick its time down for 12 days. I can be off earning a living for those 12 days and, uh, you know, check it a couple hours before I go to bed, whatever. Farm for some resources before I go to bed. Hey, that's life. You do what you do. I'm not going to cry about it because there's no point. I learned at an early age that you don't cry about life. You just do what you have to do. Be happy you're alive. It might sound silly, but it works. So, I'm just a happy Vega Conflict player. If that ever changes, I'll stop playing the game. If this becomes unenjoyable, or I find that I'm spending way too much money, I'll stop. But I've dropped more than $1,000 in this game so far. Has it been worth it? I think so. How many movies would I have to go to for $1,000? Well, at, uh, it costs about 30 bucks to go to a movie. Because the concessions are way too high. Because I'm going to buy a popcorn and I'm going to buy a large drink. Because I like doing that during a movie. But the popcorn and the drink cost more than the movie. And I know that going in. So how many hours would I get from $1,000 in movies? Well, maybe 90 minutes for 20 bucks. Do that 50 times, and what have you spent? Well, let's see. Five times for 100 times 10 is 1,000. So 50 movies is $1,000. 50 movies at uh, an hour and a half per movie is 1.5 times 50 is 75. All right? That's 75 hours worth of fun for a thousand dollars let me just check my own math here so I'm not giving you some false shit that people are going to rant about so 50 movies times 20 is a thousand dollars and 50 movies times 1.5 hour and a half is 75 hours so I'm going to get 75 hours of enjoyment out of a thousand dollars how many hours of enjoyment have I gotten from Vega conflict so far well a four-day event I'm gonna get when I'm not working uh, 12 hours a day for four days that's about what I play that's 48 hours so let's say I spent a hundred dollars in coins or crafting materials in coins for that four-day event. That's probably a lot more than I would normally spend, but that, that was one of the first events I did. About $100. And I get 48 hours of fun for $100. So in the fun per hour category, what does that turn into? Uh, $100 divided by 48 hours. That's uh, $2 per hour. What do I spend for a movie? Let, let's say it's twenty dollars that's actually less than it would cost time uh, divided by 1.5 a movie fund is going to cost me 13.33 an hour make a conflict fund going to cost me a little over two dollars an hour so what i'm paying for entertainment is vega conflict higher value entertainment well i think it is it's at least six times 
higher value entertainment than I would get from a movie. That's one way of looking at it. So, you know, you compare that with any entertainment source you might choose to pay for. And uh, most other entertainment sources are going to cost you more. And you're probably going to pay more per hour to do it. And they're probably going to be, it's probably going to end up being lower quality fun at a higher cost than playing this or any game. So, is every game going to qualify for me to pay for it? Probably not. There are a lot of games I wouldn't want to pay money to, pay, to play. There are other games I have paid money to play. In one way or another, they're generally worth it. So that's how I look at it. And that's why I'm not going to cry about Kick's Eye. Yes, they're a corporation. Yes, of course, they exist to make money. Every corporation does. That's the sole purpose for a corporation to exist. They exist as an artificial entity supported by the government where they are not only allowed, but they are encouraged to make money because they can employ people, because that's what gives us all the ability to have a living. In a capitalist society that's capitalist to one degree or another, it's quickly becoming fascist. It's neither here nor there. In this particular society that we live in, in the United States, that's what we base our society on. The ability of corporations to rip people off to one degree or another to make money. Now, if you want to cry about that, I'd say form your own corporation and learn how to make money. Then you can become one of those. As a consumer, you just deal with the fact. Everywhere you go, people are going to have their hand out. They're going to want your money. Get over it and deal with it. Figure out whether it's of value and put your money where you want the greatest value. That's it. So yeah, I spent 700 bucks or 500 bucks, whatever it was, to get my first set of Xeno ships. But after I did, the game got a whole lot easier. And yeah, I spent money to get Axis ships. Because I knew getting the first one would be the biggest hurdle. So I did. I pay money when I go to the store. I just deal with it. That's life. So, you know... Will I have to continue paying that kind of money to get each successive Axis ship? No. I've got two fleets that are on par. One's Axis, one's Xeno. I trade between them, use one, max out my, my pain point where I want to repair it, usually a couple, two, three hours, and then put it in for repair. Take the other one out. Play it until I get to two or three hours, and then stop. Because that's the way, that's the way or I can pay coins. It depends. But uh, that's what this game is. That's why it was designed. That's why it exists. It's not the worst of the lot. I've seen worse games that are less fun, that are more blatantly there just to take your money. At least in this game, you've got something you can watch at every level. You can watch the combat if you want to, or not. For auto farming, it really doesn't matter if you watch it. If you want to be slick, there are some slick things you can do that will reduce your damage and allow you to win. And if you're at least 10 or 20 or 30 levels above the enemy you're fighting, then that's your sweet spot. Deal with it. I do. I have fun. So that's this video. I just wanted to put in my two cents. Everybody does. It's my channel. If this benefits anybody, then that's fine. But you're probably going to watch me continue to play this game. Even though I know how it was designed, and even though I know it exists just to take my money, for me, the amount of fun that I get per dollar is higher than if I went to movies. And that's my comparison. 
So, uh, you know, hey, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. You're going you're gonna to watch me playing games, maybe less when I'm working, after and in a living. And uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, maybe you can entice me to do more content. Because at the end of the day, I have to do paid work first. And if you like this video, then hit the like button. If you want me to share more tips and tricks and techniques for this or any other game, drop me a comment. You know, the negative comments never get published. The positive comments might get published. But hey, it's my channel. I get to do that. So uh, that's it. The next uh, event coming up is Alien Decimation. That's in about 9 hours and 27 minutes. It's around 5 p.m. my local time in the Central Time Zone. And yeah, I'm going to play it. I'm not working right now. My new job doesn't start until September 5th. I'll be busy moving next week. Probably going to hang out with a friend in, uh, in Austin for maybe two weeks. But then I'm going to be moving on to, uh, in, in, to Denver. That move will take about a day once it gets to that point. But uh, that's where I'm at. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm here to give you uplifting tips you can use to progress in the game without feeling like you've made yourself so completely frustrated and unhappy that you can't stand it. There are enough frustrating things in life, and I'm not here to add to that, and I'm not here to partake of that. When I find something that's truly frustrating, I just don't do it, and I move on. Because life is too short to do things that I don't enjoy. But if I do enjoy it, I'm going to figure out the sweet spot so I can enjoy it as long as possible. So that's it. Have fun. Enjoy. We'll catch you next time.